I preach this morning in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is All Saints Sunday. This is the one Sunday in the church year when we remember, when we remember those who have died in faith and who are now at rest in Jesus Christ. When we remember those who have passed away from us and are now with Jesus, just as Jesus promised. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And so on this Sunday, we remember them. Not as if we might otherwise forget them. I mean, how could we? But so that we might remember that death is not the end for them. Life is. Life is. But still, death hurts. Even with rock-solid faith in the promises of God and in, 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 in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death hurts. And you don't need me to tell you that. You know that yourself. You feel that yourself. Those of you who have lost a husband or a wife, those of you who have lost a son or a daughter, God forbid, those of you who have lost a grandchild, you know it and you feel it far worse than I ever do. I feel it bad enough. I've lost my dad, all four of my grandparents, and this year I lost my Aunt Jerry, who was like a second mom to me, like a third grandma to my kids. And though I have deep faith in God, though I know where she is, though I know where they are, still it hurts. It hurts me. It hurts you. Death hurts us. Death breaks our hearts just as death broke the hearts of Mary and Martha. Their brother Lazarus had died, and their hearts were broken. Both women were broken. Both women were weeping, each in her own way. Martha, quietly and off by herself. Mary, loudly and surrounded by family and friends. But their brother's death had broken their hearts. And their brother's death nearly broke their faith. For when Jesus showed up, they said to him, Lord, if you had been here, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. What took you so long, Jesus? It's been nearly a week since we told you about this, Jesus. And the first two days you stayed put, and now you come four days after he's dead. Where were you, Jesus? Why didn't you come when we asked you to, Jesus? How could you do this to me? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary and Martha were angry with Jesus. They were frustrated at Jesus. And maybe you've been angry and frustrated with Jesus too. And for the same reason. Because you called out to Jesus. You cried out to Jesus. And he seemed to do nothing. Ignored your pleas for help. He was absent when you needed him to be present and now your loved one is dead. And like Mary and Martha, you say, why Jesus? How Jesus? How could you do this to me? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Death breaks our heart. Death can break our faith. Death hurts. It hurts God. Death broke the heart of Jesus. For when Jesus saw Mary weeping, and those who were with her also weeping, Jesus was deeply moved in his spirit. Jesus was greatly troubled. Jesus wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Death broke Jesus' heart. And death nearly broke Jesus' faith. In the hour of his own death, in the hour of his greatest need, in the hour on the cross when he was alone and abandoned, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? Father, do you not love me? Father, do you not care for me? Then, Father, why are you not here with me? Lord, if you had been here, I would not have died. Why? Why have you forsaken me? Death broke Jesus' heart. Death nearly broke 
Jesus' faith. But Jesus broke death first. Jesus broke the chains of death. Jesus broke the bars of prison. Jesus broke down the gates of hell and threw them away. Death swallowed Jesus up like some great monster, and then Jesus turned the tables and swallowed up death in victory. Oh, death, where now is your victory? Oh, grave, where now is your sting? Gone, both of them forever, because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus Christ lives again, alive, and in his body, Jesus lives. And death has no power over him anymore. He has power over death, the power of his own inexhaustible, indestructible life. I am the resurrection and the life, he says. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Martha, Martha, do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. I believe that my brother will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, no, no, Martha, not just on the last day, but on this day too. For I am the resurrection and the life, and I am here. And with that, Jesus strode toward the tomb where Lazarus was. Jesus went to the tomb where Lazarus had lain dead these past four days. Jesus told them to take the stone away from the tomb, and then Jesus cried out into the darkness, Lazarus, come out! And the man who had died came out. His hands and his feet bound with strips of linen, his face wrapped with a linen cloth, and Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. Get those grave clothes off of him. Get that veil that covers every nation off of him. Get those last desperate finger holds of the grip of death off of him. Unbind him and let him go because I am the resurrection and the life and Lazarus belongs to me. So Lazarus walked out from the tomb, alive again, risen from the dead, restored to Mary and Martha who loved him. And though Lazarus would die again. Though Lazarus is dead now and indeed has been dead these past 2,000 years, yet what Jesus did for Lazarus on that day, Jesus will do for all of us on the last day. When Jesus Christ comes again in glory and all of the dead shall be raised, every grave opened, every tomb unstopped, every stone rolled away, and on that day death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, but God himself will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will hurt us no more. Death will break our hearts no more. Death will break our faith no more, for death itself shall be no more. But God himself will be all in all, and God will make all things new. And that day is coming. As surely as Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, that day is coming. As surely as Jesus lives and reigns with God in heaven, that day is coming. And until it does, on this day, we remember those who were with Jesus now, just as he promised. And we give him thanks. Death hurts. It breaks our hearts. It can break our faith. But don't you let it. Don't you let it. Give your hurt to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your loved one to Jesus. And when Jesus comes again, he will give him back. I am the resurrection and the life. 
Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We do. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you. Holy Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for the people whom you have given to us to know and to love in this journey here on our earth. And Lord, we thank you that you sent your Son to die once and for all to go all the way through the long valley of death and to bring us home, that we might know that we never have to walk that alone, that you always hold us, you always have us. And Lord, though we hold on to those promises and take comfort in them, yet God, our hearts hurt today. And so Jesus, we give our heart to you, we give our hurt to you, and we pray, Jesus, that you will bind them up until that day when we see you and see those who have gone to you already. That is your promise, Jesus. And we hold on to it today. Amen.